Wi-Fi, one of the greatest advancements in inner technology in recent memory, allowing us to connect to users from all around the world, whether that's for work, for watching shitty YouTube videos, or to escape this miserable existence we call life. And like every other technology, Wi-Fi is constantly updating and improving to where we are now with Wi-Fi 6. But what is Wi-Fi 6? What the hell is even that? And do you even need it? Well, let's find out. Okay, so Wi-Fi 6 is the obvious predecessor to Wi-Fi 5, which was the obvious predecessor to Wi-Fi 3, and so on and so forth. Now, over the course of these iterations, we've seen the max throughput of each Wi-Fi standard increase drastically. With Wi-Fi 5 having a max throughput of 3.6 gigabits per second, we're seeing max throughput speeds on Wi-Fi 6 at 9.6 gigabits per second. That's almost 10 gig speeds. Accompanying better speeds, Wi-Fi 6 also includes some new technologies that allows for better support for multiple devices within your network, which is helpful because basically everything's connected to Wi-Fi these days. Along with that, we're also getting better security with WPA3, and in some cases, it actually helps give us better battery life in our devices. Yeah, all that sounds great. So I actually went and got myself a wireless 6 access point from TP-Link. This is the EAP 660 HD. I actually installed this for one of my friends in a previous video. I will link that up here if you want to check it out. But yeah, this basically ticked all the boxes that I wanted in an access point. I will get to those specs later, but I know you're thinking right now, yeah, Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 5, Wi-Fi 4. I thought they were called like wireless N or wireless AX. Yes. A lot of times Wi-Fi is referred to by its letter connotation. So back in the day we had wireless G and then when we moved to Wi-Fi 4, we got wireless N, Wi-Fi 5 was wireless AC, and now with Wi-Fi 6, you're seeing wireless AX. So if you see Wi-Fi 6 or if you see wireless AX in some number, same thing. So yeah, I mentioned a couple of things that were upgrades with Wi-Fi 6, but the thing people really care about is speed. Now. You heard me say that the theoretical max throughput was 9.6 gigabits per second, which seems insanely fast, and that's because it is, and don't get too excited because you're never gonna get anywhere near 9.6 gigabits per second. Let me explain how the speeds work. In modern access points and devices, you'll sometimes see a notation of one by one, or two by two, or four by four, or whatever. This is basically referring to how many radio transmissions a device or router can make simultaneously, and the more the better. And this plays a key factor in how fast your network is going to perform. With Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6, you're gonna see a max of eight radio transmissions simultaneously. Another large factor in determining your speed is the channel width. This is denoted in megahertz and is often seen at 20, 40, 80 and not really, but 160 does exist, but those are basically referring to the channel width and how much data you can pass through at a single frequency. So you can operate at 2.4 gigahertz and at five gigahertz. You'll see that a lot on routers where the 2.4 is better for penetrating objects and sometimes better range where five gigahertz is reserved for faster speeds. Now, 2.4 is gonna be your 20, 40, and sometimes 80 megahertz, where five gigahertz is going to be 40 and 80 and theoretically 160. So looking at this table, you'll see how those frequency widths combined with those radio configurations greatly affect the max speed of your network. Now, for the most part, we only care about 40 and 80 megahertz because that's the optimal range that 99% of routers operate in. And we really only care about one by one up to four by four configurations because again, that's what 99% of consumer devices work in. For example, this TP-Link router right here is a wireless AX four by four configured router. So I have a single five gigahertz channel that can operate on the four x four radio transmission configuration, which by looking at the chart gives me a max of 2.4 gigabits per second. Now my previous router is a wireless five or wireless AC router with a three by three channel on the five gigahertz network. So that has a theoretical max of 1300 megabits per second. Still super fast. So why'd I even upgrade then? Well, 
For the first time in ever, I actually have a couple of Wi-Fi 6 devices, so I figured I'd give it a shot. Also, I do like to sometimes edit on my laptop, and all of my footage is actually stored on my server. So I access that using my main PC on a 10 gigabit network, and it works great over 10 gigabit. That's extremely fast, but over Wi-Fi, not so much. So I was hoping with the upgraded standard and the upgraded speed, I would get better access to my files, allowing me to edit much more comfortably and have an overall better experience. So did that work? Well, let's plug this router in and actually run some tests. Whew. All right, so we are plugged in. So the obvious next step is to run a speed test, right? Duh, you plug in a new router, you run a speed test, you watch it go super fast and you're justified for spending all that money. And looking at my results, it looks like I'm getting the same exact speed on the old router that I am on the new router. What? Let me explain why this doesn't make sense and why I can throw a lot of people off when they get a new router and try to see how much faster it runs. So your network is only gonna run at the speed of the least common denominator or the slowest device in the chain. For example, when you download a file from the internet, it comes from a remote server which has an upload bandwidth limit. It goes through your ISP, which has a download cap that varies drastically within the United States from you know six megabits per second up to gigabit. Then it makes its way to your modem or router and then finally to your client device. Now that entire chain is only gonna run as fast as the slowest device. So if you're trying to download from a remote server that has terrible upload speeds, yeah, you're gonna be limited to those upload speeds. And similarly, if you pay for crap speeds from your ISP, you're gonna be limited by that. So even if the remote server can host files super fast and you have a ultra mega holy crap router and a brand new Wi-Fi 6 client, you're still gonna download at the speeds that your ISP provides you. Fortunately though, in macOS, they make it super easy to show you what your theoretical max of your current connection is. So right now I'm connected to my new Wi-Fi 6 router. If I do an option click on my Wi-Fi, you will see that I have a theoretical max transmission rate of 864. Now, if I take the laptop and move it closer to the router, which I will do now, you'll see we're getting a much higher transmission speed. So you're probably seeing that number and thinking, wait, I thought you said I could get 2.4 gigabits per second on that router. Well, yeah, on the router, it's a four x four router. However, the MacBook Air has a two x two configuration, meaning that the theoretical max speed is 1200 megabits per second. And remember, it's only as fast as the slowest object, that being the MacBook. So yeah, I was getting pretty close to that 1200 when I was pretty near the router. So let's connect to our older Wi-Fi 5 router. So immediately when we connect, we are seeing uh, much lower transmission rates down to 650. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna walk over there and see how high I can actually get it. Be right back again. 866, that's like the max. Okay, so as you saw, I was getting 866, which is a theoretical max of that router on a two by two channel. So yeah, taking those numbers into account, we should have much better speeds on the Wi-Fi 6 router than we did on the old one but that's theoretical maxes and we have to put this to a real world test. So what I'm gonna do is go out to where I'd actually like to edit, which is laying on the couch and see what kind of performance we can actually get directly to my server from each router. So let's go do that. All right, so this would be my uh, chill working spot. So let's see what kind of performance we get on an actual speed test from my device to my routers, directly to my server that is running on a 10 gigabit connection. So I'm gonna use a software called Amphorus, Amorphous, Amphorus DiskMark, which is a almost similar version of Crystal DiskMark, but for Mac OS. So we're gonna connect directly to an SSD pool I have on my server, which can go uh, much faster than even 10 gigabit. So we will not be bottlenecked by the performance of the drives. Let's just run the easiest test we can, this is going to show us pretty much what our max speeds would be with file transfers. So while this is going on, we can actually look at our switch and see what the throughput speeds are in real time. So you can see it fluctuate up and down, but it looks like our read speeds are averaging in at around 77 megabytes per second. So 
That's in megabytes. I will translate that to megabits right here. So your reads and writes aren't gonna match all the time. So we just wanna look for a top number here. So with our reads, that is 77 megabytes per second. So let's switch to the Wi-Fi 6 router and see if we get any better performance. Okay, we are now running on the Wi-Fi 6 router and let's see what speeds we get. I will take this time to let you know that the TP-Link access point that I bought has a 2.5 gigabit uplink, which I have connected into my 10 gigabit port of my switch. So we will not be bottlenecked by the uplink speed of the router in case you were wondering. So immediately you're seeing faster numbers over here. Well, that's because it's doubled up on the 10 gigabit ports, but we're still seeing higher numbers and that is translating over to our disk performance. All right, so read speeds 101 megabits per second. That is quick math, about a 40, 30 to 40% increase from the Wi-Fi 5 router. And that's kind of what we expected. So we got a theoretical max on the Wi-Fi 5 router of 866 and a theoretical max on the Wi-Fi 6 router of 1200 megabits per second, which is again, a 30 to 40% increase, which directly translates to the speeds we're seeing from our server across the network. Now, this test makes more sense to me because like I mentioned before, when you're downloading a file from a remote server, this is essentially doing the same thing, but within your internal LAN. So there's less hops to make and you have full control over the speeds of those devices. For example, if I had this client device and a decent even Wi-Fi 5 router, but my server was running some crap hardware, then I'm still gonna get crap speeds, no matter what device I use or what router. And kind of the inverse is true. If I have a full-fledged NVMe super mega 10 gigabit server with a holy shit mega super access point switch router combo thing, but my device is from, you know, 10 years ago, not gonna get good speeds. So a common thing you wanna look at when purchasing devices is, A, is it Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 5? B, is it one by one? Is it two by two? Is it four by four? Is it whatever? And another thing is that access point manufacturers can be pretty sneaky where they'll say, oh, wireless six router, Wi-Fi six router, where the max speeds are, you know, 3000 megabits per second. But when you dig into it, that might be a tri-band router with two five gigahertz channels and a 2.4 gigahertz channel where each one of them only may have a max speed of 1200 which is still pretty fast, but you're not gonna get 3000 out of just a single device. You can't connect to all the channels at the same time. So try to dig into the specs. If they don't list it, check the user manual just to see what it is you're actually buying. So that is our speed test, but another thing we need to test is range. Now with Wi-Fi 6, you don't necessarily get better range. 2.4 gigahertz is 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz is five gigahertz. The only thing that really affects the range is the gain of the radio transmission within the router. So if you have a Wi-Fi 5 router versus a Wi-Fi 6 router with the same gain, you're probably going to get relatively the same experience. But what Wi-Fi 6 does do better is that if you have multiple devices, you'll have less interference between those devices. So you might see an increase in performance if you have a crap ton of devices in your house. That's why Wi-Fi 6 is so much more beneficial for um, sporting events and large gatherings where you have a crap ton of devices in one centralized location. But let's actually take the laptop down the road and see what actual speeds we can get out of the routers because I'm actually curious. So let's do it. All right, so we are outside of the house. I didn't want to drive down the street and park in front of my neighbor's driveway like a total creep. So what I'm gonna do is stand out here and connect to each router. I'm gonna use the 2.4 gigahertz channel just to give it a shot penetrating uh, the house and trees and all the stuff in the way. So I'm gonna run it here and then I'm going to walk down the street with my laptop and see where we can still get respectable uh, speed. So first test is with the Wi-Fi 5 older router. Let's do it. And for this, I will be using speed test because I don't fully expect to get the 1200 megabits per second as if we're standing next to it. And I do have a gigabit down connection, so we shouldn't be bottlenecked by an actual internet speed test. So let's run it on the, the wind probably sucks, but decent speeds. I mean, 
probably around 45. Okay, 45 down. Let's walk down the street and see where we can still get respectable speeds. Okay, so we got about two houses down, which isn't bad. So this person probably thinks I'm crazy looking into a camera right outside my house and talking to it. But let's run that same exact test, but with the Wi-Fi 6 router. So let's go ahead and connect. All right, so now we're on the Wi-Fi 6 router, 2.4 gigahertz, same test, let's go. Okay, 45, literally the same, kind of what I expected. So same thing, let's walk down there. I am almost positive it's going to be the same results, but let's do it. Okay, um, we honestly didn't get as good of performance out of the Wi-Fi 6 router in terms of range as we did with the older uh, Wi-Fi 5 AC router, which is a Netgear AC1700. They've changed the name of it, but you know, I'll, I'll put it over my face right now. Which goes to show you, um, Wi-Fi 6 isn't really an upgrade to range. You can get better performance out of an older Wi-Fi 5 AC router in terms of range than you can on a brand new Wi-Fi 6 router which we just saw. So if you're looking to upgrade range, then Wi-Fi 6 might not even help you out. So let's go back inside and I will do my uh, wrap up, I guess. Okay, so what did we learn today? Well, we learned that in the right scenario, Wi-Fi 6 can certainly be faster, which I would hope so. We also learned that the range isn't really a boost if you're current router is already good enough. We also learned that it's not necessarily important if you have Wi-Fi 5 or Wi-Fi 6. More importantly, what is the configuration of your access point or your device? Is it one by one or is it four by four? Funny enough, uh, new MacBook owners are actually kind of annoyed because the old Intel-based MacBook Pros had Wi-Fi 5, but it was a three by three channel, whereas now, you're getting Wi-Fi 6, yay, but they're actually two by two channels. And if you look at the chart, a Wi-Fi 5 three by three channel is actually faster than a Wi-Fi 6 two by two channel. So you're actually getting slower speeds on the new MacBooks. Now you're getting the benefits from Wi-Fi 6, so maybe it balances out, but most people just care about speeds. So in general, uh, would I recommend upgrading to Wi-Fi 6? Not really. For most people, you're really not going to see a difference. I was a very niche case where I was editing off of Wi-Fi and I needed the absolute fastest speeds uh, connected directly to my server. 99.999% of people are not going to be in this use case. Uh, the only other scenario where I can see upgrading to Wi-Fi 6 for most people is if you just have a crazy amount of devices in your house, whether that's a huge family and everyone's got like 10 devices and then you have a crap ton of home automation IoT stuff, then maybe Wi-Fi 6 will help you out with all those devices and maybe dropping speeds when a lot of them are online. But for the most part, um, just go with a cheaper Wi-Fi 5 3 or 4 by 4 um, access point and you will probably get just as good speeds as if you were to upgrade to Wi-Fi 6. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you found this video entertaining. I hope you learned something. I certainly did when researching all this Wi-Fi stuff. So let me know down in the comments what your Wi-Fi configuration is. Are you stuck on Wi-Fi 5 or even Wi-Fi 4? Are you thinking about upgrading to Wi-Fi 6? Are you still thinking about it after watching this video? But let me know down in the comments. But that is all I have for you today. If you like the video, please drop a like below. 
If you like content like this, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.